for a long time now, Synology has offered a very solid solution for recording and reviewing security camera footage with their Synology NAS devices. They have their own software solution called Surveillance Station, but apparently that wasn't good enough for them because now Synology is jumping into the market of security cameras. And to be completely honest, for a first generation product, it's actually not that bad. Over the years, I've received multiple different brands of different NAS devices to review. And just like anything, every single brand always has a pro and a con. There's usually strengths and weaknesses, and that's what I like to look at. Now, Synology and I have actually had a very long lasting review relationship where they've sent me NASs in the past for me to review. I still use these things today because they've just basically become my favorite devices. Yeah, I got QNAP and TerraMaster, stuff like that, but those just don't offer the things that I like. And just like the NAS devices they sent to me for free before for review, they also sent me today's camera, the BC500. And I'll be the first one to admit, I'm a little biased towards Synology just because their products have impressed me to the point of them basically being my favorite devices to use every single day. But I do my best to try to not let that bias get in the way of an honest review. So today, let's talk about Synology's brand new security camera lineup, specifically the BC500. Now, Synology actually released two different cameras, the BC500 and the T... I didn't even take the right notes on that. Let's say TC500. These are pretty much exactly the same cameras as far as the specs that they have. They're just two different styles. One is a bullet style and the other is a turret style. So it just really kind of depends on what you want to use it for, whether or not you want the bullet or the turret. These things are running a 1 over 2.7 inch sensor with night vision with a range of up to around 98 feet. It's not too bad. They have a fixed 2.8 millimeter lens with a field of view of about 110 degrees and an aperture of f1.8. Now the maximum resolution that they can record is 2880 by 1620. This is at 30 frames per second. It does have HDR, it has noise reduction, and all of this runs over power over ethernet, which of course is really nice, but you also have the option of just using a regular DC plug. On top of all that, it supports a micro SD card and it has a microphone, so you can record audio. So let's be real here. When it comes to specs, the lens, the sensor, stuff like that, like these specs are pretty much comparable with a lot of the average security cameras that you can buy on the market today. So it's nothing really special here. The key feature that this camera has that a lot of other companies don't have is the compliance with NDAA and TAA. Having this compliance actually puts them in a whole different playing field because if you don't have that compliance, you actually are not even considered for certain applications, maybe high secure areas. I mean, think about it. If you're running like a bank or, you know, government facility, you don't want some just completely random off brand name, you know, eBay fine camera that may or may not send all of your footage to China. So this compliance is really geared towards security, vulnerabilities, making sure that that camera is safe to use in a high secure environment. Now I've already told you that the specs of this camera, the lens, the sensor, et cetera, very comparable to a lot of cameras on the market. Again, just nothing really special, but the quality is pretty good kind of sort of like a lot of other cameras on the market. During the daytime, things are pretty clear. You're able to get a good dynamic range. You can see shadows. I can, in my example footage here, you can see the sunny side of my face while still see the shaded side of my face, fairly decent. Overall, the light doesn't get blown out on the camera. You don't just have a bunch of blinding spots. I mean, it, it kind of handles everything pretty well. In terms of night vision, however, uh, well, they kind of lost me on that. And I, I hate to, to say that, but they really kind of lost me on that. Like the night vision isn't terrible, but it's not great. I probably wouldn't even consider it to be good. The thing with their night vision is that you don't really get a lot of the ghosting. I see a lot of cameras out there, security cameras that have ghosting effects, which means when you're walking from one end to another, you have that little trail of just like ghosted white thing behind your walking path. And from what I can tell the Synology BC500, it handles that ghosting really well, as in it just doesn't really show up. The only problem is, is that the night vision itself is really just not that clear, especially compared to some of like my Amcrest cameras, where it's just way more clear during the night. Throw on top of that some of the noise and the grain 
kind of gets a little distracting. And when I hooked it up in my backyard, it for some reason thought a tree was a constant moving object with no wind or anything. Like the tree was just existing. And this camera is like, screw you tree. I hate you. So I have to label the night vision capabilities on this camera to be subpar, especially when you consider the price, which I'll jump into a little bit later into this video. Daytime is on point, but nighttime, just needs a little bit of work. Video quality aside, which you know is very important, but you put all that aside, let's talk about some of the features that this camera offers and why it actually can be considered for some really good applications depending on your needs. That is the AI driven detection system. Little asterisks here, all this stuff that I'm about to talk about is if you have a Synology NAS and you have the Synology camera because this AI works in conjunction with the Synology NAS. But it comes with things like people detection, vehicle detection. It can do loitering of vehicles or people or groups of people. Like it's got some pretty good features and it seriously actually does a pretty good job at creating thumbnails to allow you to kind of browse through the different alerts, find maybe cars that you are looking for, allow you to see little thumbnails of people to just I mean, it's an easy system to use. The surveillance station itself is pretty decent and the thumbnail creation based off of whatever set that alert off is really good. And you can still do all of the basic stuff like motion detection, you can set up different zones. So if you want to ignore certain areas of the camera, you can do that as well. You can set up an intrusion line, which is like a digital fence saying that if somebody passes this line, you can set up specific alerts just for that, which if you think about it is like perfect for something like a front porch camera, for example. And I've been running this thing for I want to say probably about a month, which by the way, Synology, if you're watching, I apologize it's taken so long. I don't have a good excuse, but here we are. Please forgive me. But I did have a chance to really test this thing out, go through some of the alerts, look at the thumbnails and try to get the best possible experience that I can with all of the AI driven technology behind the camera, which is kind of good and bad. I found out it is really, 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 really good at detecting people. Like I've never seen it not detect somebody and accurately make a thumbnail, make it easily browsable, easily downloadable. Like it's just really good at that. When it comes to vehicles, on the other hand, things get a little dicey for me. To clarify, it will detect every single moving vehicle. Like it has no problem with that. The thing is, is that it kind of has this weird obsession with parked cars, specifically one across the street that it just says is always loitering. So even if a car drives by down the street, that same car that's been parked there for days, that the car that sets off the alarm will say, hey, trigger this alarm. But then for some reason, the thumbnail generation, the AI detection of a loitering car will focus on that parked car. So then all of my thumbnails for all of the cars that drove by are centrally focused on the parked car. That actually has been a very annoying part for me. Like it really, if I want to go find a car, like let's say somebody down the road, you know, they had their car broken into and they're looking for a blue SUV. They're like, man, did anyone see a blue SUV? So if I'm going to go into my system, I'm going to go into my recordings and I'm going to look for a blue SUV. The thumbnail generation is amazing as long as your AI is not obsessed with the car parked across the street. If it is, then all your thumbnails are that car and then you have to go through every single video to try to see whatever set that trigger off if it's that blue SUV that you happen to be looking for. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. That sucks, honestly. Synology, this needs a lot of work. This car is parked there. There's no reason to constantly alert me that that car is loitering. It's not loitering, it's parking, it's parked. But I do think it's pretty cool in the surveillance station software that I can go through and I can filter out these notifications because it does the people and it does the vehicle. I can actually say, hey, only show me the alerts with people or only show me the alerts with vehicles. That's really kind of nice. It truly allows me to just like hunt something down specifically, an event down specifically without having to go through a bunch of alerts that maybe I just don't care or I know will not be what I'm looking for. Now, moving on to the micro SD card. A lot of cameras have this, not that big of a deal. The way this camera uses the micro SD card is essentially like a, hey, your Synology system is maybe offline for some reason, let's buffer and cache everything on this SD card. And then when we get connection again, 
then we upload it to your NAS, which I think is really nice because let's face it, sometimes you have to do updates. Maybe you're rebuilding something, updating something, you lost power, whatever the case may be, your NAS may be offline for some amount of time and it would really suck if you did not have recordings to back everything up while that was down. For example, I use Blue Iris. If Blue Iris for some reason freezes up, I have no record of anything that happens outside because I have no SD cards and my cameras outside. I have the option, I just don't have them. Come to think of it, I actually should probably fix that. Either way, it's a great peace of mind to have that backup just in case your NAS is down for whatever reason it may be down. Now let's talk about the audio. I ragged a little bit on the night vision, actually a lot of it on the night vision. The audio, not so much terrible, just not great. It's kind of mediocre, really. This is an audio test. I'm right next to this. I get away about six feet, six or seven feet. This is what it sounds like just talking normally. I'm not really raising my voice at all, just talking towards the camera directly. So this is an audio test, audio test, one, two, three, audio test. Here's the thing with the audio. You can adjust the sensitivity, right? So you can turn it up and down, pick up, you know, more sounds, less sounds, stuff like that. It has some noise cancellation features built into it, which is all cool. The problem is, is that it has a very mild rumble in all of the recording, more so than like, let's say my Amcrest cameras, for example. Uh, it, it just always has this noise in the background that it picks up no matter where I put it. I set it up inside my house. I set it up outside my house. No matter what, I always have this I've sat around and played with the sensitivity. You, you turn down the sensitivity to maybe not pick up this ambient noise and then you can't hear voices very well. I've cranked the noise cancellation up all the way and it still just does not get rid of it. But to be completely fair, even with that rumble, like I'm still able to hear things like me talking, things are clear. So the audio is actually still very, very, very usable. Good girl. Alright, it's hot. Let's get back inside and air conditioning. It's crazy out here. Especially if like you're using it for something legal reasons and you want to bring that into an audio editing software and you want to remove that sound level, that 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 bass noise out of the audio, I'm sure you could do that pretty easily. But for just the average everyday user that wants to listen to it, if you load it up and it's just constantly just I mean, come on, that's kind of annoying. I don't know if it needs a better microphone or if the firmware slash software or whatever needs updated to better handle this noise. I don't really know the best way to fix it. I don't know if it's a hardware limitation or not. But what I do know is that I would really like to see that fixed to make the audio in that a lot more usable. Now again, everything I talked about today is heavily dependent on pairing this camera, the Synology camera, with a Synology NAS. All the AI detections, the zones, the intrude, everything. If you do not use a Synology NAS with this, you don't get that. And the price of this camera, at least at the time of recording this video, is $220. There is a bonus here though, with the Synology NAS system, and it's, actually, it's like $56 per additional camera license past the two that the list let you do. So they're not making you pay for an additional license with the Synology cameras. You can hook up as many as the Synology cameras you want. However, the Synology cameras are $220. So at $56 a license, let's remove that. That means you're basically paying for that license and the camera itself is $164. Now you can use this camera with other software, which I have set up with Blue Iris. You can use this with other software, but it is not, it is not ONVIF. Instead, you're just using an RTSP stream. So you have a little bit more limited functionality. And on top of all of that, because it's not Synology, you lose out on basically all those features that I just talked about, and you just get the raw video footage feed from that camera. So if you're going that route, you're paying $220 
for essentially rolling in the cost of the license to use it on your Synology NAS. You have an, all that AI capability that works with the Synology NAS and the camera together to give you all those features. And if you hook it up to something like Blue Iris, you get none of that, which is essentially the equivalent of like a $60 security camera that you could plug into Blue Iris and get the same exact probability quality and features and everything that you're limited to if you were to use this camera with something other than a Synology NAS. So definitely take that into consideration. If you're looking into a Synology camera, you better have a Synology NAS to do it. So overall, for Synology's first generation of security cameras, I'm kind of impressed. Really good daytime footage, really great AI integration working with my Synology NAS. Overall, I like the way it works. I have a little bit of issues with the cars. The audio kind of sort of sucks, but totally still usable. It's just the night vision that really gets me. The $220 price point for the camera seems a little steep, primarily just because of the night vision itself. Like they say, you get the free license and you don't have to pay to hook that up to your Synology NAS, but then again, you also have kind of sort of like a more expensive camera that doesn't really have specs that far are far superior than a lot of other cameras on the market. So I feel like that licensing fee is just kind of rolled into the price of the camera. But if you are building a surveillance station on your own NAS and you want something like all of these AI detections, intrusions, you know, zones and stuff like that, this camera could actually be considered as a viable solution. But at the end of the day, it all depends on what your needs are, what you actually want to use the camera for, and whether or not you have a Synology NAS. Well, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure to post those in the comments section down below. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you, Synology, for sending out this camera. Like and subscribe below, and have yourself a great day.